Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish. So uh, to, uh, today I have brought another interesting video for all of you. This is uh, based on uh, my, I mean, this is my original problem that I wrote in uh, year 2020. Uh, I picked it up from my Facebook page. And uh, uh, I find that uh, many students, they face a lot of difficulty in trying to analyze this problem and many times they come up with wrong answers and uh, uh, when they are told the right answer, they find it sometimes very counterintuitive. So that's why uh, it's a very interesting problem and uh, uh, there's a lot of things to learn here. So uh, that's why I, I took this problem. So let me straight away get into the problem. So let me read it out. Okay. So what's the problem? Uh, a stone is to be launched on the surface of a uh, frictionless uh, cone. It can either be released from rest, thus following path A or given some horizontal velocity along the surface, uh, path B. This is the path B. So imagine there is a horizontal circle over here. So you can either give it uh, some velocity along the tangent of the circle. So it can follow path B or it can go along path A. Okay. Okay. In which case will the stone reach the bottom first? So we have to comment whether it, this will reach first or this will reach first. Okay. And under what conditions will the stone not fly off the surface? So if you want, you can give it a try. And uh, I'll get into my analysis right away. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so first of all, let me list out the concepts that I'm uh, using this problem. Okay, so uh, first concept uh, that I'm going to use is the pseudo forces in the rotating frames. So uh, I might do a video on this one sometime uh, uh, on how to derive the pseudo forces in rotating frame. But uh, for today, I'm just going to use the results. Uh, directly so what are the pseudo forces that act in the rotating frames so suppose this is a block and there's a turntable rotating with some angular velocity omega and uh, let us say it has got some angular acceleration alpha okay then uh, what are the sir uh, and then let us say this block is also having some velocity somehow it's being pulled on the turntable related to the turntable let us say vr is the velocity as seen from the turntable or we can say velocity in the rotating frame so what are the fo pseudo forces that act on this block so first pseudo force is the centrifugal force okay so centrifugal force all of us know is uh, m omega square r r cap so this is the centrifugal force that acts in the outward direction okay what are the other pseudo forces so another force because of angular acceleration another pseudo force acts in the tangential direction and that is called the euler force which is minus m times alpha cross r okay and what about uh, there's then yet there is another force which is known as the Coriolis force and what is the value of Coriolis force that is minus 2m omega cross v as seen from rotating frame. So these are the three pseudo forces which act on a uh, any uh, block uh, in the as seen from the rotating frame which also has some angular acceleration alpha okay. So this is these are the pseudo forces that I am going to use in a short while when uh, I will try to make the free body diagram of uh, the stone moving along path b from the rotating frame. Then the other concept that I am going to use for solving this problem is that uh, whenever we have a, a zero torque then the angular momentum is conserved. So see if a stone is moving along the surface of this cone then the normal reaction is uh, perpendicular to the surface and therefore it must pass through the axis of the cone. So torque of normal reaction about this vertical axis is zero and similarly if you uh, uh, talk about the torque of mg. So the torque of mg uh, has got I mean a, a since Suppose a stone is somewhere over here and mg is acting like this, then r cross mg is perpendicular to this axis. You can very easily see this mg is vertical, so r cross mg is mg is vertical, so r cross mg is horizontal. But this axis is vertical, so uh, torque, even though torque has, uh, there is some torque about, if you consider a point on the axis, there is some torque about that point. But the component of that torque along the axis is zero. Therefore, angular momentum of the stone is also conserved about the vertical axis. So that's what I've written. Let me read out. The torque of uh, normal reaction about the central axis is zero and angular momentum of the stone about the vertical axis is therefore conserved. Okay. Uh, and as the stone slides down, the horizontal speed of the stone along the surface of cone must decline. Now, why is that? See, angular momentum is conserved. Okay. So if angular momentum is conserved, then uh, uh, that that means what the tangential suppose uh, you to consider circles like this so so since the radius is increasing so tangential velocity along the circle must be uh, decreasing why because velocity into radius product must be constant because of conservation of angular momentum so as the distance from the axis increases 
the speed along the circle this component of speed along the circle must be decreasing okay so this is the second thing that i am going to use while uh, analyzing this problem okay what as the stone slides down the horizontal speed of the stone along the surface cone must decline so also the angle lost to the stone about the vertical axis of the cone so i hope you have understood these two, uh, two things and now uh, we'll be able to analyze this very easily now imagine a rotating frame on the axis of the cone from which the stone in case b slides along a straight line okay so, uh, so a stone is uh, going along this uh, tangential direction also there is some displacement but i can always imagine a uh, uh, I mean, I can always imagine a coordinate system which is rotating in such a way that stone appears to, uh, to be only moving along the slant uh, direction and there is no tangential uh, movement. I can suitably rotate my frame in such a manner, okay. So, uh, so I, I can use uh, such a frame. Now what happens in such a frame, you see normal reaction is a real force which acts as it is. So normal reaction will be acting like this and mg will be acting like this. And apart from that, there will also be a centrifugal force which is m v tangential square uh, where uh, v tangential I mean the velocity along the uh, the cone uh, surface. So that is your v tangential. Okay. So centrifugal force will be there. Apart from that, there is some velocity along the cone surface and therefore if you uh, consider the Euler forces and the Coriolis forces also if you consider they will be parallel to the uh, horizontal direction and therefore uh, I mean they, they have no component in uh, uh, in this direction they are only horizontal forces so along the uh, slant direction I mean those forces are either coming out of the page or going into the page and therefore they have no component in this direction okay along the slope so that means what so along the slope what forces are acting so there is mg sin theta acting in this direction and uh, apart from mg sin theta uh, there is uh, the pseudo force component mv square v tangential square I, I missed out in r so there should have been r so mv tangential square divided by r it has also a component here so you can clearly see that uh, if there is some tangential velocity then the downward force that is uh, pulling this block downward that is more than the case when you just release the block okay so we, we can clearly see here that the centrifugal force is a downward component in addition to the mg sin theta also note that Coriolis and Euler forces have no components in this direction. You can analyze the Euler and uh, Coriolis force will not have any component in this direction. Therefore, uh, stone B must reach the ground first. Why? Because centrifugal force is also helping it go down. Now, as an exercise, you might uh, also like to understand this in terms of ground frame. So, I leave uh, uh, that, that exercise for your thinking. Uh, so I hope you understood the part A of this problem that why stone B should be should be reaching the ground first and uh, <laughs> and many of you have guessed it the other way around many of you have said uh, uh, that stone A will reach first but uh, I don't know I mean this is a very common mistake it happens so many times with my students so uh, nothing to worry but I hope you are able to understand the correct analysis of this problem okay then uh, there was one more part what under what conditions will this uh, not fly off the uh, this thing uh, fly off the surface of the cone okay so now uh, as i said due to angular momentum conservation the tangential velocity decreases as the r increases okay tangential velocity will decrease why because about the vertical axis if you see the distance is increasing as the uh, the stone is coming down the distance from the vertical axis is increasing and therefore the velocity along the circle the component of velocity along this circle, tangential component of velocity along the circle must decrease because velocity into radius is constant. Okay. Now, uh, uh, now because of that, what will happen? See, there is centrifugal force, which is, this is mv tangential. By v tangential, I mean the component of velocity along the circle. So, mv tangential square divided by r, this is the centrifugal force. And as the stone uh, comes uh, lower and lower, r is increasing and v tangential is decreasing. Therefore, centrifugal force keeps on decreasing, right? And since centrifugal force keeps on decreasing, tendency to fly off also keeps on decreasing. So when is the tendency to fly off maximum? It is at the initial moment itself, right? Why? Because uh, centrifugal force is largest at that point and uh, uh, therefore and uh, for flying off normal reaction should be zero. So that means what cent component of centrifugal force in this direction should be greater than the component of mg in this direction, right? And therefore I can say mv square by r sine theta, uh, this angle is theta, so this is 90 minus theta should be greater than mg cos theta right and therefore i can say that velocity should be greater than root gr cot theta okay so uh, here theta i have taken this angle uh, if you take uh, the upper angle then instead of cot theta you will get uh, uh, tan theta 
so that's my analysis of the problem uh, i hope you enjoyed the analysis and if you uh, enjoyed the analysis please do give uh, a thumbs up to my video and please share this video as much as possible with your friends uh, through whatsapp telegram discord or whatever medium you might be using for uh, networking with your fellow students and uh, most importantly if you're not already subscribed to my video please do subscribe to my video i mean uh, please do subscribe to my channel uh, because that's what keeps me motivated to do a, a new video every day and uh, thanks a lot for watching this video i'll see you in the next one and uh, as always god bless you all thank you